Here are some Nendroids. Here are some Nendroids. Here are some Nendroids. Hello and welcome to that man. That is me merchandise and today this is some more anime figure collecting tips. Yes, I know it's been a little bit of a while since the last uh, anime figure specific relating collecting tip. So today we are looking at Nendoroids. Now if you've been following the channel for a while you would know and you can probably see I have a bit of an extensive collection of Nendoroids. The reason being, Nendoroids are affordable, they're pretty cheap on terms of anime figure collecting and there is a lot of them and the reason with there being a lot of them means that you get a lot of figures that you wouldn't normally get a figure of normally, at least not a decent quality one. You might get something like a prize figure or a small figure, but these ones they're all pretty much around the same size, they're all um, they're pretty uniform and they always look pretty decent on the shelf if you like that kind of thing. Um, most people kind of recommend them, um, they kind of portray them alongside Pops, Pop Funkos, not Portrait of Pirates. They are not as good as Portrait of Pirates. Um, and the reason being is because they're all pretty much the same kind of... They, they're all... Well, the chibi. The chibi. They're adorable. Well, they can be adorable. And they're all affordable. Well, depending on your budget. <laughs> I'm saying they're affordable. For some people they're affordable, for others they're not. But I tend to find a lot of people collect Nendroids pretty much um, as a whole. With Nendroids you do get a lot of variations. You do get a lot of unique and fun character designs with them. You get a lot of ones where they kind of like they stand out amongst the crowd. That's what I like about them. They're all kind of unique. I mean who would have thought you would have ever seen characters such as this. Lord Eines from Overlord. A character who you would never ever expect. You would, this would never work as a port uh, as a pop. Uh, as a port of a pirate. It, I would love to see a port of a pirate scale figure of Irons. Uh, imagine a mad, a, a massive, huge, amazing figure of Irons. Oh God, that would be amazing. But yeah, you would never see him as a pop. It would never work. It would never. You would never get the the personality or the character of this one. And he does come with a few cool little things. For example, you can. Uh, you can open his mouth, you can kind of adjust his arms, you can adjust his hands. He is a little bit pausable. Another good example is characters like the White Blood Cell from Cells at Work. Look how awesome he looks when you kind of just put him on a, on a display. You're not going to get that with like, cheaper figures. He looks pretty darn amazing. He's full of character and he fits in with the Nendroid universe. I display him alongside characters such as um, Yumiko from Kakaguri, Link from Breath of the Wild, and um, the best girl from Girls and Panzer, for example. It's You can kind of put different series together and they look great on a shelf. When you're buying Nendroids, you tend to find they come in different size boxes. This was the original size box that they released for quite some time. Um, this was up until about probably about this time last year, this was about the standard size box. You used to get some bigger, you used to get some smaller. I don't have any examples of the old style. The old style, um, the, the, it was a little bit more elongated um, rather than kind of wide. Uh, the re and you kind of had a box and you used to have like a little bit of a, a, a like a design around it and then there used to be the name underneath. That was kind of before it got to being Nendroids started becoming a bit, little bit more popular. Um, they were more catered towards the Japanese. For example, here we get the English name, so you can tell that this is designed for an English market as well as a Japanese one. You didn't really tend to get that much with the original style of them. The next style, which is probably the most common style you'll probably find for new releases now is the swan. It's a little bit more compact. Um, these ones, if I was going to see, I was going to collect them um, and I was going to keep the boxes because some people see it collect the boxes, some people don't. Um, personally, I don't because I don't have the space. Um, I mean, I could, suppose I could flatten them, but it's up to you as a collector. Um, I know I'm probably someone's sitting there going, ah, he doesn't keep the boxes, but I don't have the space and I'd rather have the space for manga figures. But 
If I was going to collect the, and keep the boxes and I was going to keep them in the boxes, like some people do, this is my favourite kind of style. The reason being, they're all pretty much around the same size. You get the character, you can see them pretty darn well. And um, You see some of the alternate face plates, which you don't really see much in the original one. And you can see some of the other kind of designs around it. You get a nice big image of the character and you get the character's name on the clear plastic rather than down here. I really do like this kind of new way of working and it does save a lot of space and it does um, it does make it slightly cheaper on shipping uh, which is always great so if you are collecting them uh, it is something that you need to consider you need to consider shipping and handling because yeah that can quickly uh, build up the last style is the DX versions um, not every single character gets a DX version it tends to be once in a blue moon. I think for, so far for the characters I've had, the DX versions I've seen has been, well, Rin Shima from Laid Back Camp and uh, Link from Breath of the Wild. He, the, both of them had DX versions, but the, there is a few others where they do get DX versions as well, which is perfectly fine. Um, you will get to see some unique boxes. Um, for example, the Rem and Ram childhood version, they have like what's, it's kind of like, for example, it's, it's two like this, and um, they're kind of hinged on the side, they're both, they're about the same size, but what happens is that you can go like that, you close them, and on the side of it, on here, you see the two characters in a little bit more detail. That is another unique kind of box. Unfortunately, I don't have it to show it off. Um, hopefully, yeah, Good Smile keep them ones going because I'll pick it up next time I'm at an event which does Good Smile limited products. But yes, we do come to limited products. Uh, every now and again, Good Smile will have, for example, a um, they'll go to an, an anime convention um, over here in the UK. It's very few and far between. It tends to be London MCM and that's about it. But I'd imagine if you're in America, um, Anime Expo and a lot of the big ones will kind of have these limited ones. And these limited ones are supposedly limited figures where you can only buy them at the Good Smile booth. Um, these ones, they, they usually just reprints or um, alternate versions of characters that already exist. For example, we just seen there, there we had the um, the Mega Min, which was the school version from the Konosuba spin-off, and we obviously get Childhood Rem and Ram. There's usually a special Miku figure as well, and yeah, it's um, they're pretty darn nice, and they're not usually too much more expensive than a regular one. I think Mega Min was about average priced compared to others on the convention floor. Um, I'm seeing convention floor because as you can probably imagine a convention is going to be a little bit more expensive than just buying online. So which comes to another point. Buying online tends to be my preferred choice of buying Androids. If I do see one that's kind of went under the radar, a one where I kind of thought about it and left it there and I've seen it in a while and I'm like, oh I want that. Um, I'll buy it for example, I bought uh, Eins in the wild. Um, I kind of waited on characters like Rain, Shima, um, White Blood Cell, um, and the two uh, Little Witch Academia ones. Um, so it's up to you. Personally, I try to buy them online a little bit more. Um, they're sometimes a little bit cheaper. Um, you've got a factor in shipping and handling and customs. Customs, especially if you live in the UK, customs is a major, major issue, kind of. Um, it's one of those things you, you kind of need to be more aware of when it comes to buying Androids. Uh, good Smile Company does really good ones. They do do pre-order bonuses. Um, I've only ordered once or twice from Good Smile. I kind of am considering shifting to the Good Smile because I am liking some of the bonuses that you do get. But it's worth checking. If sometimes the bonus can be one alternative thing which you'll probably never use or you'll never put on. Um, another one may be that it might be, for example, the Rinshima one, it was a uh, light up campfire. And I was like, oh, I would have liked that, but oh well. So one cool thing about Nendroids is that you do get a lot of accessories. I don't know if you can really see here, I know the light's reflecting off the box, but here, you, as you can see with Rin, you get, obviously it is a DX, so you do get a lot more than you would normally. You do tend to get about... 
you tend to get about three variations of um, one character. So you get like the main character, and you get two alternate faces, tends to be average, and you get enough to kind of have two or three alternate poses. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, including, for example, the Mega Me um, unboxing, you will see that she does come with a few different alternate unboxings um, that you can kind of do. I say alternate unboxings, alternate versions you can kind of pause them in, which is pretty nice. It means that if you do get sick of them, you kind of can. Um, change them up a little bit which is, does make them quite nice. So you can see here you get camping, a camping chair, a book and camping tools, you get away so she can sit down and um, you get camping different kind of hands and these make things a little bit more interesting in my opinion than just a standard generic static figure where they're kind of just like well yeah you can display them like this or you can display them that's about it. So like you said Nendroids they do come with a little bit of unique um, thing. One thing about Nendroids is that they can be paused and the thing you will kind of rely on a lot is these little bases that you, down here. You will get used to all of these little kind of peg bases and one of the things you will notice is that, yeah, this is going to be your, <laughs> this, this is going to be something that you are going to get used to. Each Nendroid comes with a base, it comes with a little arm and a little peg to kind of hold them in. Most Nendroids will not stand on their own accord. We will get some, for example, like Eins, where the bottom of it is hollow and yeah. Um, for example, Rin, she's going to be able to sit down, you're going to have that, so that means that she probably will sit on her own accord. But most Nendroids will not stand on their own account. Um, some of the older ones, for example, this Valkyria Chronicles one, she has oh, she has a magnet instead of a instead of a normal arm. So yeah, you can kind of just clip it on. And in my opinion, I actually like these a lot more than the pegs. The pegs are really annoying. You can imagine why? Because obviously they come. The reason being is it's to make them a bit more cheap. Um, and obviously it means that they're not sticking magnets in everything and they cost them a fortune to ship and stuff like that. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, um, it's just one of those things. Um, personally, I don't like the pegs. I kind of wish they would stand on their own, but it's not going to happen. And it's something that you kind of need to keep in mind. These bases and the, the pegs, they do take up a lot of space. As you can see, the base, it's pretty square. But you tend to find that you've got to put these on an angle just so they can stand on the base. And so yeah, they do take up a lot more space because when you're on a shelf, they're going to be diagonal rather than square most of the time. I mean, you can kind of put them on different ones. Um, I mean, some people kind of put them in the middle. That looks like the ideal. But then, as you can see, that hangs over the edge. And yeah... So it's one of those things you're going to have to keep in mind. Shelf space will go quite quickly when it comes to Nendroids. As you can see, I intend to get about four in a line on these kind of shelves. Um, obviously, I put Casimir and Mega Min in front as well. So it's just kind of, yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah. So one of the things I do want people to think about when they are considering buying an Nendroid. First off. Do you really, 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 really like this character and will you like it for a long time to come? One of the things that Nendroids and Good Smile on a whole tend to kind of do is they very much... They... They go with what's current and what's popular. And they put it in advance. So for example... Well, like, for example, Rin Shima came out about, she came out a few months ago. I am, I was a bit late on picking it up. Uh, I've had this about a month as well, so she probably came out about March time. Late Back Camp ended late last year. I know this is a season two and there's more stuff coming and it was one of those ones where it's pretty, pretty popular. So yeah. Um, for example, uh, White Blood Cell, he came out at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. Uh, Mega Me from Food Wars came out. Um, Kamina from Gurren Lagan came out about 10 years after the release. Spice and Wolf came out a long time. 
um, in this corner of the world came a long time afterwards. So, and for example, uh, I think uh, this month we've got um, from Uma Musume Pretty Derby, Goblin Slayer. So these are all titles that came out late last year. So the thing you've got to remember with buying Nendroids is will you still like the series potentially a year after release? For example, one of the ones that I was very much for example this For example, one of the ones I was very unsure about was Little Witch Academia. I adored this when I watched it. Coming up to two years ago, I pre-ordered Aqua and I pre-ordered Diane. And as you can see, I've had these for a long time. And I mean a long time by which I've had them from about January. And I haven't unboxed them. Um, I've got nothing against them. I do still love the series, but not quite as much as I did. Um, so these are kind of characters that I like, but um, I'm not quite as excited about them as I was when I ordered them. So yeah, for example, Goblin Slayer, that was a series I quite liked when I first, um, when it first came out, when I was first reading the light novel. Um, I chose not to buy it, I was, I was a bit unsure, I was kind of was like, I've got a lot of Nendroids, I don't want to overdo it. And now I'm kind of like, I'm not really a fan of Goblin Slayer anymore. So if I bought that, yeah. So this is one of the things you kind of need to be aware of, especially when it comes to ordering from online. Some sites will let you to cancel. Some sites will let you cancel. Others won't. So yeah, you. I would potentially think before you buy. What people are doing now, a lot of people. This seems to be a kind of common thing in collecting as well. And um, for these, is that people were going out pre-ordering pretty much everything, and then they were coming. I think people got fatigued. And then a lot of people were selling en masse. So I saw a lot of people selling, especially when it came to stuff like Yuri on Ice, ReZero, um, Little Witch Academia. Um, stuff that kind of like was popular a few years ago, but now it's kind of dropped off a little bit. And I'm now seeing a lot of people trying to sell these, one, these same ones off um, at a little bit cheaper. Um, stuff like Gurren Lagan, Ekamine and Spice and Wolf. They've been going for 10 years, so these kind of have the popularity. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of as well is these things will get expensive if you leave them. For example, at the moment, um, the Konosuba squad, apart from Yun-Yun and I think Kazuma, um, they're all pretty expensive. You can get them for around 100 quid. Um, Rin Shima, the DX version, she sold out before she was released. Um, and this one is quite expensive. Same with um, her adorable flump friend uh, Nadeshiko. She got she's about hundred pounds. Um, Tanya the Evil was about hundred pounds. Galgo Chan was hundred pounds. Aqua was hundred pounds. The My Hero Academia and Androids were hundred pounds. But they're now getting re-released. So it's a bit of a gamble sometimes. Personally, I feel if you. Personally, if it was up to me, if you feel like you've got the disposable income, get them on a pre-order um, and then sell them on if you don't want them or try and get them, if you, if you, what people tend to do, what people I do find do is they tend to come up too closer towards the same thing and they're like, I want to sell me pre-order on, um, I can't get rid of it and stuff like that. So yeah, most sites won't let you just cancel it. So it's one of those things you need to consider. Do you like the cut the series enough? Do you like the character enough? And it comes back to my kind of whole thing of the four kind of things. Do you need it? Do you want it? Probably. Is it one of your favourite characters? Uh, will you still enjoy it? So these are kind of one of those four things where you kind of need to consider. The other one is, is can you afford it? Because <laughs> you don't want to... I mean... These are nice, but don't make good food. Don't make good food whatsoever. And yeah, um, it's one of those things you need to consider. Do you really, really want to invest in these? And this is kind of one of those things. I know I've been kind of all over with this kind of, this uh, whole thing with Nendroids, but it's one of those things you do need to consider. I adore Nendroids, and Nendroids will be my go-to 
in terms of if I want to buy a figure. They're affordable, they're all, all around 40 to 50 quid. Um, compared to the larger scale ones, I'm, if I'm going to buy more laid back camp stuff, uh, but I'm not going to buy a massive thing of uh, Little Witch Academia. So Nendroids are the kind of one where you kind of think, well, do I really like the series? Um, if you're unsure, a Nendroid's probably better than just buying a hundred quid figure. Um, it's still too expensive in my opinion to kind of just waste money on, but um, if you keep them boxed, you probably are going to be able to sell them on a lot better than if you're going to be, if you unbox them and then display them and just go, I don't like the series anymore. Um, this is why I didn't bother with like the My Hero Academia ones, because I kind of got out of the series. <sighs> but yeah. Yeah, so I hope this has given you a little bit of food for thought on whether or not you want to collect Nendroids, whether or not they're an investment you want to continue with. Personally, I will be, but it's not for everybody, and I can kind of understand if people don't want to collect. Before we go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with a few of my favourite Nendroids displayed on my shelf, so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like as a group. I'll see you next time. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like. Please come subscribe. And if you have any personal tips on collecting androids or anything that you kind of want to share with people, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. And here is my Nendroid shelf. Yeah, it's not particularly amazingly well done, uh, put together, but it's doing the job for now.